There you go. V- via telephone, Damon Wright uh, from the of the uh, Berkeley County Board of Education uh, joins us. Damon, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Thank you for joining um, us. I'm, you okay? I'm well. No, no, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I just was uh, hoping that Maria was going to say she's not going to do it because she didn't want to embarrass the uh, actual baseball players. With no, 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 no. Mile an hour. <laughs> nice. Throw the heat. Other way around. Other way around, Damon. <laughs> Whipping the heat right down the pipe there, baby. Exactly. So the Board of Education had their uh, meeting last night, uh, Damon, and a couple things came out of there, uh, one of which was uh, President Pat Murphy pointing out that uh, pretty soon everybody has to learn how to live without the COVID funds. Yes, that is uh, something we've been talking about and trying to put out there for a while because the schools have really, really benefited. of Every single LSIC or Local School Improvement Council uh, presentation we've had, They've all said how wonderful the intervention is and all the other extra help and training that they've been able to have has been so beneficial. Well, most of those positions have been paid for through COVID funds. And so now we've got to figure out how to reintegrate some of those individuals back into the classroom and at the same time try to help a lot of the newer teachers, um, some of the permanent subs, and, and all of our staff just to... Uh, do an even better job for our students. Do we have any idea but, how, how many, uh, how much personnel are affected by this that will have to go back to the classroom? Um, I'm thinking it's, I'm trying to remember, um, I just popped my head. It's probably close to 100, I'm thinking. And when will that transition have to occur by, Damon? Uh, 2024. So the, the funds run out in September of 2024, so next school year we're going to be trying to um work on that uh, to try to let those individuals know that maybe going back into the classroom you know you may to look for the different positions or where they may want to go what school they may want to work in what what area they may want to go um because they're all wonderful staff members and that's why they were given these positions because um they have the ability to train and to help others to be better at their positions so it's going to be beneficial for the for those students in that class, but I think it, it, it may hurt us overall because they can't then go other places uh, to assist. What what happens to these services once the funds run out and the people get reassigned? Do we have them on a limited basis, or do they just end completely? Um, it, it basically ends. That those additional services will end. Now we may be able to absorb some of them, but not the amount that we would like um, just because of how integral they are right now, how, how important they are to help. So some of them will pr- may be able to be maintained, but not, not enough in my opinion. Bill? Yeah, uh, I think there's going to be another point we want to discuss as well, and that's the school bus uh, uh, decision yesterday. But uh, on this topic, uh, We've uh, uh, there's a the legislators have taken great pride in saying they have not increased the budget. Uh, there are downsides to that. Uh, the schools have depended a great deal on COVID funding, as you've said. Uh, with that being removed, uh, if if we go back to a budget of yesteryear and only two or three years ago, uh, can the schools functionally survive? The, the, yeah, the schools will survive. Um, we'll, no, the word we'll the, op, the operative word was functionally survive. Um, no, we can still functionally survive um, based on previous years' funding. It's just going to be so much harder um, because you're not, going, especially here in Berkeley County, because we're we don't have we don't get the funding through the school aid formula that we should. Um, so we're always over formula. So out of our general revenue, we're always paying more out of our general revenue just to fill the positions that are not met by the state aid formula. So our county will suffer even more. So we'll keep digging into that revenue to try to pay for these positions that that are needed, but we just don't have the unlimited funds or, well, we don't have the extra funds that are needed for what we, for what we need. We just don't have that because the way the state aid formula has not been adjusted doesn't help us. It helps counties with smaller populations, but growing counties like ours, especially as we've we've exploded, we're just not getting that extra help that we need.
Well, your your two parts of the discussion did not really fit together. You said one, you could function and survive, then you went through a litany of problems you're going to have to have, some of which cannot be solved uh, without additional funding. So I don't really see how you can have it both ways, Damon. Uh, no, no. What I'm saying is is that we will survive. It's going to like I, I can survive with with my with limping along. I can still survive. I can still and I can even still, still run a little bit. I hurt my foot a couple of weeks ago. I was still able to get around and do things, it's just going to make things a little bit more difficult. So it's, it's, we're still going to be able to educate the students, still going to get the buses run, everything like that is still going to occur. It's just the uh, it's going to just put a little more strain on the system. That's all. Well, the teachers now tell me that they are uh, they're at near the breaking point. There, a lot's been asked for them. Uh, a lot's been asked for them during the COVID days. A lot's been asked for them now with the uh, with the hacking. Uh, they're having to spend a lot of their own time uh, trying to do things that they uh, that would previously been much easier to do. Uh, by surviving, does that in effect mean we're just going to be ask our employees to do more with less? Um, I'm actually trying to encourage the um, community to help so that these teachers don't have all those additional stresses to um, assist in the schools, to um, help put on events, do things that will benefit the students and the staff to encourage them and to help with their their mental health, help with the stresses that they deal with, um, to be more empathetic to our teachers um, and our, all of our staff because any little incident, they are constantly hit even things put on social media about them, et cetera, that may or may not be totally true, and that just continues to erode the morale. And we don't need that in a system that is is fighting to keep them here. So as a school system, we're, as a board, we're trying to find ways to um, take the load off. But some of those things, like you know, any legislative change, like we just had the, different, the aid bill to try to get more aids in the, in the classroom, but any other mandates in terms of what you're going to teach or um, add this program or that program, that's that's increasing their workload. So we we want to be able to work with the legislators, hopefully to pass some type something to take some of those um, added things off, or maybe even some of the mandated trainings for those teachers that have been here for a certain amount of time. You don't you don't have to do it every single year because you've, you've done it for the last 15 years. Um, maybe every two or three years. So just taking a little bit off of the pressure and listening to our teachers. What do our teachers want? We, we try to listen to them. We encourage them to come to the board meetings, email us. What can we do to help? A lot of our educators know that our what we can do is, is, is limited in some ways, but what we can do, we want to be able to do. So we want to be able to listen um, and as much as possible. Maria. Um, so, Damon, you made a point, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole too deep here, about the school aid formula um, and that smaller counties are going to benefit from the school aid formula, whereas a Berkeley, maybe a Jefferson, um, you know, have to sort of make up on every end. My understanding, and it's been a long time since I've been involved, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the formula dictates you know, a certain number of personnel versus a certain number of students. So that would, um, you know, and that's how you get, for lack of better words, that's how you get reimbursed. But Mm -hmm. if a system decides that, that, that that isn't adequate, then the system makes that decision that to go over the amount that that gets reimbursed and a lot of things that i hear is that you know that the system that berkeley county schools has opted you know for a lot more administrators versus um teachers boots on the ground um talk a little bit about um how that how that works and is that a fair um uh you know comment that that there are too many administrators and not enough boots on the ground well sure uh, actually we we heard that complaint several times and we actually had a firm come in and basically do a study and say hey are you are you over do you have way too many administrators for what you should have and i was expecting them to say probably or yes and but i was 
surprisingly and, and pleasantly surprised that that was no. Um, compared to the number of students we have, the staff that we have, uh, and the surrounding area and other counties in, here in West Virginia, we're at or even in some cases below uh, the number of administrators. Um, our IT department is smaller than many local um, IT departments are. Uh, HR department is much smaller. So we don't have – people think that all the money's in the board office – and it's all all the money's going there. The board office pay is a very small percentage of the money, and the administrators there we do have um the administrators that are needed. We have a lot of different things that are going on in the school system that their roles are needed. We do need more teachers, we do need more service personnel, et cetera, and those are included in the formula um when you talked about um how I mentioned about the smaller counties, there's actually legislation just passed where there's basically a floor for the school aid, school aid formula, and several counties are below that, but they're still getting much more funding gotcha. because <clears throat> they're under that. Whereas for us, we have we're grown so fast that we it can't keep up, so we're not able to. So the positions we need, the the, the money that's coming in isn't enough because say it's, the formula says, well, you should only have this because we're already past the ceiling. So so then we need we needed that additional we need that formula to change to say, oh, wait, they actually do need more because they have much more than what was projected or what was we said the formula says is needed. So I mean, you we have, we have classrooms that have over 30, over 30 students in a math class that we have to get our class sizes down, but we need the additional money to hire the staff to do that. But but you said earlier you're going to uh, you could live with the shortfall by getting more community involvement how would the community involvement uh, address this class size math class size of 30 well they couldn't address that but what they could address is for example the teacher that may, may need that time to work on a lesson plan or whatever but now they have to be in the hallway to monitor what's going on in there or the on lunch duty or watching the buses or all these other things that are taking time away from what they can do in the classroom or to get ready for that next period or to uh, sit down with a student and help them they don't have. They wouldn't have to do those things because maybe somebody could be in the school. Like we have, a, we have a watchdogs program. We have other programs, but the more individuals that are doing those things, the less the teacher has to do those things, and they can do other things that can benefit the school and that and those students. Is there, so that's how the community can help? Okay. Uh, is there vetting required for these volunteers? Yes. Um, well, for example, the Talk to Me program, the Pass program, all those things you can have a background check. Um, now, the read aloud program, you don't have to. Uh, that's what I participate in. Uh, we're going back this afternoon. You sit in the classroom with a teacher and read. There's not really a background because the teacher's right there the entire time. You're not alone with the students. Um, but other programs, um, you can just go through a background and you can go and, and volunteer and help. Damon Wright is our guest. He is a member of the Berkeley County Board of Education. We appreciate his appearance here on the program this morning. The board met on Monday. And in the journal article, Damon, I was interested to see in the note from that that uh, Pat Murphy mentioned that they were looking to have an alternative school option for students. That's why they're looking more tightly at budget items or one of the reasons. Can you explain what the alternative school option for students would be? Uh, that's something that Pat's proposing. We haven't really had a lot of discussion on that, but um, from what I've been able to ascertain from talking to him, it's basically those students that are having trouble um, in the classroom. Like they're not behaving, they're um, taking all the attention away, and they may need additional supports. They would go to this alternative school, get the help they need, and then get reintegrated back into the school system. But they wouldn't be they wouldn't stay in the general school setting and continue to disrupt so they may not be at the point where we want to expel them or anything like that but it's sort of like a bridge to try to assist them and then bring them back into the classroom so that they can continue to be productive or to be they can be productive members of the school community do we have any kind of rough estimate as to how many students that might be in a given school year damon no, that's what we're trying to get the numbers for now to see how many students that would be, what staff would be needed, all of those budgetary and planning um, things. We're still in the beginning stages of that because you want to know all that before you even say, hey, we're going to do it. You don't want to jump and say we're going to do it and then find out, oh, wait, that's, we're not 
we don't have the capacity to do that. So it's just basically let's look at it and see if it's an option. What type of approvals do you need to make that happen? Um, not a lot. It's just we just need to know that we a location, how we can do it. Sort of almost, almost we have a transitional school now, but it would this would be a little bit different. So we just need to know that we have the the funding to be able to do it. We have the staffing to be able to do it, and a plan uh, to have it done and done effectively. Um, that's the main thing. We had Senator Patricia Rucker on, formerly the education chair in the state, now chair of school choice in West Virginia, and she was mentioning about the functioning charter schools uh, in the Eastern Panhandle, both brick and mortar and virtual. Does the Berkeley County Board of Education have any oversight on those charter schools, Damon? Um, no, we nothing has come across our desk. Uh, at least I haven't seen anything come across in terms of approving or denying anything with charter schools. Um, they have been their own entity uh, at this point. Nothing has has come across where we've had to vote to a, approve or deny anything regarding charter schools. Do charter schools have to go before the BOE for any approval for anything? Um, not that I've seen. I, I'm, I'm sure Jackie will correct me in the comments, but uh, I have not seen anything that they've had to come before us to, to get approved. Okay. In regards to some of the rules that were passed or laws that were passed out of the legislature this year, and I know some of those await the governor's signature still, but uh, your thoughts on the transfer bill, the law that will allow students to transfer at least once uh, in high school from school to school for a variety of reasons? Um, I don't have a problem with allowing a student to transfer to another school. I think that if, if there's a better better educational opportunity or or for whatever other reason they want to transfer, I, I feel that's okay. Um, they need to go where it's going to serve them best. How about participation from students at uh, private schools or homeschooled that do not uh, have an athletic team at their if it's your home school, you don't have a team, period. Uh, but their ability to participate at the public school in uh, team sport or activity. Um, that's the only one I think I have some concerns about. The only reason is because, uh, as many have mentioned, if you're going to represent that school, it's, it's a school community. And there are, to me, there are certain requirements of those students in that school um, in terms of discipline, grades, et cetera that homeschool and private school students, it's not the same rules. So you're competing against students that have one set of rules at their school that they have to abide by in order to participate, but you may not have those same restrictions on yourself. And personally to me, if I choose to homeschool my students, then that's there's pluses and there's minuses to doing that. Um, the pluses, I, you know, it's one-on-one -on -one instruction, et cetera. There's, I may be able to pour more into them, but there's also some negatives where they may not be able to participate in certain activities because they are not a part of that community. I've chosen to take them out of that community. Um, there's rec leagues. There's all kinds of other community ways that they can um, exercise and participate in other things. But to me, if I've chosen to exclude them, then that's, that's a choice I've made. And the school bus vote, four to one yesterday, you were the one dissenting vote. If you could explain what the subject matter was there and why you voted no. Sure. Well, the subject matter of, of that was to donate a bus um, that had depreciated to the sheriff's department to use for training. Um, it, you know, they can train on, you know, if there's an incident on the bus, how do we approach this, et cetera, which I, I think is wonderful. I think it's a great opportunity for the sheriff's department. Um, my questioning regarding that or why I voted no is I had questions about could we have auctioned the bus or sold the bus and use that money to put back into our classrooms. Um, even if we sold it to the sheriff's department at a reduced cost, they'd still be able to get the benefits of using the bus for training, but the school system would have a, the benefit of then maybe being able to, you know, disperse the funds or even have, say we want to have an end of the year event for, for a school or community or something like that. We could use that money for that. Um, so I was trying to find something that would benefit our school community at the same time as benefiting the sheriff's department and our school community that way as well through their training. Any idea what the so book value of that bus was? Uh, I never got a definitive answer on that. Um, it, it, so that's, yeah, so I don't know what the book value is. or And I, and I haven't been able to find out yet uh, whether or not uh, it could have benefited us better in terms of a tax write-off. So I haven't looked into that yet as well. That was just Monday. Any final questions for Damon Wright? Uh, 
quick question, Damon. Do you sure. anticipate the um, the Hope Scholarship, again, having an impact? We're talking about growth, growth, growth. Um, obviously, um, second year in the works, this will allow students to, um, to go from public to private and get the the tax dollars associated with that do you anticipate a big decrease in student population no i don't anticipate a big uh decrease decrease i think there'll be some students that will take advantage of that program uh if, if them and their families feel that that's best for them um i think there'll be some that will do that um and then we'll see here in the next few years how the overall impact um if those students are going to be getting the help in uh, education that uh, they seek through those alternative means. Damon, thanks so much for your time. Any final thoughts? No, I just want to say um, thank you to the staff for all the hard work. I know everybody's pushing to get to spring break, and the children are getting antsy to have their own break. Um, So we just uh, want to thank the staff for their hard work. Um, And we had two merit finalists, uh, Andrew Davis and Colby Schaffler uh, from Hedgesville and Spring Mills, respectively. Uh, that are representing our county and our national merits uh, finalists. Thank you, Damon. I appreciate it, man.